Hi guys, so that's the recording for Thursday the 16th. So we we talked about the Orsted experiment that he did in uh, 1820. So he was doing work with uh, electricity. So here you have a conductor and the compass on his desk start to move, right? Which was the proof that electricity produces magnetism or actually magnetism the, the the electricity is the source for magnetism so here is the famous setup so you have a dc circuit so you have positive charges moving here through that conductor and back to the power supply to the battery and you see here magnetic field lines so they are several things to notice first thing is one of the thing is that as you move away from the conductor you see that the magnetic field lines are further away from each other which means it gets uh, weaker right so it means the magnetic field here will be weaker than the magnetic field there that what that um, uh, the, it's, it's like contour line so when the lines are close to each other, that means the magnetic field is stronger. The other thing you see is that the magnetic field lines or the magnetic field always, always curl around, right? Always circle out. So it's circling out the conductor. So magnetic field cannot converge like, um, electric field for a negative charge cannot diverge like um, like the electric field line for a positive charge they can only circle out that's because there is no magnetic monopole so you see to find out which way which way they are flowing you take your right hand like this the you see that the current is going into the screen so into the screen so the magnetic field here is clockwise that's because the current goes into the screen if i switch the battery so if the plus is here the minus is there so in that case it will be counterclockwise you can you can uh, you can show which way the magnetic field is flowing using a small compass so a compass is just like a small magnet it's like a magnetic dipole okay it has a north here and the south and where the north is pointing to that's going to be the direction um in uh, in which the magnetic field is flowing so you see this little dipole here or compass is always aligning itself with the magnetic field line okay so you can imagine somewhere here there is a, so a north here there is a south so it's attracted to the south so anyway that's going to show you which way the magnetic field is flowing so that's going to be clockwise say in this direction now you can imagine that you take that conductor here and you make a loop with it what's going to happen to this magnetic field the magnetic field is not just at that point of course it's going to be through that conductor so if you make a loop for this with the solenoid that's what we get and last time in class i show you how to make an electromagnet that's going to be an electromagnet here and you see it will behave as a bar like a bar magnet you see this um, this side is the north and then that side is the south so again take your right hand and that means the current is flowing this way toward you okay so the thumb will be the north so my hand like is is like a bar magnet that's going to be the north that's going to be the south okay so this is like a bar magnet with the north here and the south there and i can show that again with a small compass see the compass shows you which way the magnetic field is flowing right from the north here it's flowing 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 
back inside to the self. So from the north to the self and even inside. So inside you see that uh, usually the, 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 the density is the same everywhere, which means that the magnetic field is uniform. And for uh, an electromagnet, we put inside what we call the uh, core, which is uh, made of uh, soft steel. So that way, the magnetic field here is almost zero because the core that you put inside here will uh, grab all those magnetic field lines and squeeze them inside, okay? So outside, it's like you have no magnetic field line and you increase the, the strength of the electromagnet. And I told you, you can build an electromagnet just with a screwdriver. You use an NML wire, connect that to a battery, like a 9-volt battery, and, and you're going to have a... An electromagnet. Okay, what else I wanted to show you? Um, you have also, I think I have, you have that simulation as well. Okay, so you see here that's going to be the plus. Okay, so the current is flowing here toward you. So you expect the north north to be here on the right so that will be the north that's going to be the south and you you do have an electromagnet here and if you have your compass indeed that's the south and here that's the north and you know that because the current flow from the plus like this so towards you so that will be the north here and that will be the south and the magnetic field flow from the north, make a circle back in the south. Okay, and if you have AC, what's going to happen is that you, the, the, the phase here will oscillate between north and, and south. Okay, so what else did we do on Thursday? I also show you um I did show in class I have just a small simulation here. So what you see here is a magnetic field in a solenoid, right? So, so again it doesn't have a core. So inside the magnetic field is about uniform and as you move away the magnetic field gets weaker. Again, it's going to circle out of the north back into the south. And let's say this is connected to a power supply. As soon as, soon as you switch off the power supply, so you open the switch, all that magnetic field is going to collapse, right? It's not going to collapse instantaneously. It's going to take time, but it's going to collapse. When that happens, if you have an open switch, you get a surge in voltage, you know, across uh, across the switch, and that's how a spark plug will work, right? It's because what it's doing here, it's storing energy. So a magnetic field is a way to store energy, the same way that you can store energy in electric field. You can store energy in the magnetic field. So you see here, you have a magnetic field that is... Uh, uh, that has been built from a power supply. And then as long as the switch is closed, you, you keep that energy here. When you open the switch, the magnetic field is going to collapse and you're going to burn out that energy as a induced voltage, you know? So if you have like a little gap at the end, you're going to have a spark. And that can... Um, can be very dangerous. So you see here the magnetic field is collapsing, 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 collapsing. All that energy is being burped out. So that's how it works. Now, of course, that's collapsing, but you also have expanding. So when you have, so this is called a solenoid. Sometimes it's called a coil or an inductor. 
So it's just a wire going around and around and around and around that you connect to a power supply. And what's happening here, you are building up the magnetic field. So that means when you first connect it to a power supply, first there is no current yet because you are, you are using the energy to build that magnetic field and the magnetic field is expanding so you are storing energy from the battery inside that magnetic field so this is called an expansion it's a simulation from uh, MIT i think you can visualize also this uh, the magnetic field from a coil if you sprinkle iron filing here like this you can do that uh, setup here i use the cardboard i connected here to a power supply and you can visualize this magnetic field around of course it should be in 3d here you just see it in uh, 2d here you visualize it as well it's just a small coil here and you can see the magnetic field always circle out always circle out and you see that the source for magnetism is electricity flowing is electricity then i lost um, i lost i lost the slide Okay. Um, so I did, uh, so here again, you have a loop of current here. So you take your right hand. So it's going this way. So that's going to be the north here and that's going to be the south. So you see that the magnetic field goes from the north into the south. So this is behaving like a bar magnet. You have exactly the same um configuration okay you have the same pattern if you if you increase the number of loop then you get a solenoid the 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 magnetic field is very weak outside very strong inside and it's uniform inside so that could be used for an um, mri for example so these are the application we talked about that i'm i'm going to upload a video where i'll um, do some demo with a with a speaker a speaker is very interesting so i can show you how it works here you, you see you have actually an electromagnet which is attached to a cone here which is very soft that can be moving uh, back and forth and it's inside the permanent magnet okay so you see the wire is inside the um, permanent magnet so when you're going to have music playing for example at a given frequency what's going to happen is that the electromagnet will uh, switch um will switch uh, its face here so that here will be south and then it's north south north south north south north at the same frequency than the music so it's going to be pushed and pulled pushed and pulled by the permanent magnet Okay, you're going to have a force here, pushed and pulled at the same frequency than the, the music, right? So it's going to be pushed and pulled. So because it's very soft here, it's going to make sound wave at the same frequency. So basically here you have an electromagnet connected to a AC power supply. And it will, uh, it the current will oscillate at the same frequency and the frequency of the music and so it's going to be pushed and pulled here and you're going to make sound wave so if uh, i i think i already show you that Here, you see you have an electromagnet, you connect to AC, 
So you see how the face here is going to be north, south, north, south, north, south, but it's going to oscillate at the same frequency as the music. So it's going to be pushed and pulled by a permanent uh, magnet that will push and pull a cone and you're going to make a sound wave. So that's how it works. So let's go back to here. So we talk about uh, MRI, which is a very interesting uh, setup. So you have an electromagnet as well. And remember, like a compass likes to align along the magnetic field, right? So inside the, the body, so here you have like, um, you have someone here. And that person is inside uh, an electromagnet, so in, inside a huge coil that will produce a very strong magnetic field. So we talked how dangerous that can be if you have like um, something made of iron or metal that you live in the room when you turn on the magnetic field it can be sucked inside so it can be used could be turned into a projectile so anyway you have a very strong magnetic field inside which is uniform and inside the soft tissue you have a water molecule and in the hydrogen atom, you have a, you have proton and proton, they spin. And because they spin, they, they're going to behave like small compass, small compasses, right? With a north here and a south here. Okay. So it's just imagine those little things spinning. It's like a little loop of current. It's like behaving like small electromagnet, all those little hydrogen nucleus. So they behave like small compasses, small, small, small magnet. So let's say all those little hydrogen nucleus, they will align themselves with the magnetic field. Okay. Because like, like, like small compass, and then you excite them at the right frequency with a radio wave. Okay, so they're going to absorb that radio wave and they're going to be into a higher state of energy. So they're going to flip, right? So now they're going to be like this because, you know, that, that will be a higher potential energy because they are against the magnetic field, which they don't like. Because you remember that magnetic field is like you have a north here and a south. And those here are like little magnets with a north here and the south there. So the north wants to be facing the south and the south wants to be facing the north. So you flip them, they're going to not to be happy. So when they come back, they go, they're going to go back to their uh, energy level, which is the lowest le level of energy. They're going to burp out that energy as radio wave and those radio wave will highlight it what will be highlighting the inside. So you are highlighted from inside out. So that's how it works. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so magnetic force. Each time you have a moving charge, so these are moving charge, right? Or electricity flowing. Inside the magnetic field, here we have a wire of length L. Inside the magnetic field, it's going to be acted upon by a force, right? But that force is uh, not like the electric force. Remember, the electric force is F equals QE. So the force is along the electric field. That force here, that magnetic force, has to be perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the current. So you have to use your right hand. They have, and you have different way to do it. But that will be the current. That will be the magnetic field, and that's going to be the force. So if you have the current going into the screen, and you have the magnetic field going from to the right here, north to south, the the, the force will be down. So a magnetic force will always deflect. 
you see that magnetic force has no component along the velocity of the charge. Remember, these are like charge flowing. So they cannot speed them up. They cannot slow them down. It can only deflect them. In addition to that, of course, to have a magnetic force, you need to have something charged. So it doesn't work with neutron. And the charge has to be moving. It has to move. Okay. So that's going to be um, the magnetic force. I will give you the equation. So that will be the force on a current carrying wire, right? Let me show you. So, of course, it's going to be proportional to the current. It's going to be proportional to the magnetic field. And it's going to be proportional to how much of wire is placed in or, or the length of the conductor. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, just a demo and then I'll give you a, the equation. And I'll, I'll do a demo. I, I did a demo in class, but I will do it in a, a different video after I'm done with this one. So let's see. So I have here a large magnet, south pole, north pole. So the field is pointing. So you see, for to find the magnetic force, you have to understand that it has to make like X, Y, Z coordinate system, right? Even though the angle between the current and the magnetic field does not have to be 90 degrees, it could be less than 90 degrees. So in that case, in that case, the force will be smaller. But you see that the force has to be perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field. So the magnetic field here is from up to down or from down to up. I don't know which one is north. The current is in this direction. So the force has to be inward or outward. Up. And then I have a big, uh, well, copper tube, which is connected to the wires here and there. When I connect these here, electricity will flow through this guy, through the red, through the copper tube, and then up through ground, and then back home. So we'll have electricity flowing this way, magnetic field pointing up. We expect a force inward. And sure enough, we get an inward force. So you see, um, you have the, the current, the magnetic field. So the current was going this way. Um, the, the current was going this way. No, the current was going this way. The magnetic field, if the magnetic field goes, okay, the, the current go, going to the left, magnetic field was going up. So the force was going in, okay? So that means the magnetic field was going from north to south. So the current going to the left, magnetic field is going up, the force will be inside. I have an app just to show you as well. I um, want to open it. So you see here that's plus, right? So try to predict which way the conductor is going to go. So you see the current, so the moving charge are going to flow this way, so it's going to be to the right, so moving charge will be to the right. The magnetic field is from top to bottom, so from here to there. So try to guess if the conductor is going to go in the screen or toward you, using your uh, right hand, right? So it's going to flow this way to the right. The magnetic field is down. So the force should be 
in the screen. In the screen, you see? So what's going to be the equation for the force? It's going to be the length of the wire placed inside the magnetic field times the current flowing inside that conductor times the magnetic field. And then it also depends on the angle between the wire and the magnetic field. But in that case, the, the angle is, uh, uh, what did I say? The angle, the angle is 90 degrees. So we don't have to worry about the um, theta factor. Now, if I switch the battery, did I switch it? Yes. You see, now it's going toward you. Okay. So that means the current is flowing to the left, magnetic field is flowing down, the force is going towards you. Okay, and then last video, the jumping, 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 jumping wire. So it's the same, kind of the same setup. So here you have a huge horseshoe magnet with a uniform magnetic field here between the pole. And you can see that the wire is very thick. So I, in, in the, your test, you are supposed to understand that thicker is the wire, less resistance it has. Because you don't want to have a thin wire there since it's connected to a car battery. A car battery can uh, burp out like a hundred amps current. And if you have a thin wire with a lot of resistance, all that energy will be turned into heat and you can start a fire. So you need very thick cable here. It's going to close the switch. Boom. So the magnetic field in that case um, is applying a force upward, right? So it's a deflection. So the force is up. So let's see the, the force is up. The current could be from here to there. Magnetic field towards you. So the, the force will be up. If um, he's going to reverse reverse the switch and now the force is down it's quite a strong magnet here but it's also a strong current so that's why the force is so strong right if um, that means because that's because if you look at your equation sheet here the magnetic force is proportional to the current proportional to the magnetic field and also proportional to the length, how much of a conductor you have inside the magnetic field. So the length of the conductor that is placed in the magnetic field. We're going to see that it's going to be a cross product, meaning the angle between the current and the magnetic field matters, right? So, Okay, so let's go back to here, to, to the, do I have okay, uh, another, another demo and then we're going to do the math. Here is a very nice application, uh, many application labs. So you have a cathode ray tube, CRT. It's connected to a very high voltage. And here, let's say you have an electron gun, which is just a filament, which is very, um, which is heated up. So it's going to emit electron. So you're going to have a beam of electron going straight. That's because you have an electric field here between the plus and the minus because you apply a voltage, right? And you remember an electric field can speed up. So all that uh, Q, the charge of an electron times the voltage applied equals equals to the change in kinetic energy. 
Okay, so that all that electric um, energy is going to be turned into kinetic energy. And then you bring a magnet, and that magnet is going to be deflecting the beam of electron. Okay, it's going to be deflected up, and deflected down. When you want to do it for electron, electron have a positive charge, so you don't use your right hand, you use your left hand. Okay, for negative charge. So let's see if I have the movie here. To demonstrate a Crookes tube, a cathode ray tube, we need a high voltage power source such as this one. We need the Crookes tube, which has a metal cathode, a metal anode, a screen that has been coated with a phosphorescent material that gives off light when struck by electrons, and a bar magnet. As we turn on the screen, we notice that the electrons are emitted from the cathode and as they strike the fluorescent screen, we're able to see the cathode ray, this stream of electrons illuminated. We can use a magnet to show the deflection of that stream. Here we can see the electrons being deflected by the magnet. The cathode ray moves upward. If we reverse the magnet, we would predict that the beam would be deflected in the opposite direction. And we observe that the beam is deflected downward. So you see that a magnet can only deflect moving uh, charges, whereas an electric field will speed up charges, right? So it, it, it's not the same. Okay, so just a quick review for um, those in calculus. You have what is called the cross product. So when you take two vectors, vector A, vector B, they don't have to be perpendicular to each other. They can make an angle with each other, okay? When you cross them, so you do A cross B, you're going to get a third vector, and that vector has to be perpendicular to both A and B. And you see you have the angle here. So the magnitude of the cross product will be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. And you see that if, as, as you decrease theta, so as you bring those two vectors together, the magnitude of the third one is going to decrease, decrease, decrease. And when those A and B, those vector A and B are parallel to each other, it's going to be zero because sine of zero uh, is zero. So when A and B are perpendicular, that's when the magnitude will be the largest for the cross product. Now, if you increase more than 90 degrees, again, the magnitude is going to decrease, 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 decrease. And when A and B will be uh, like a flat angle, it's going to be zero again. So what, what that cross product means, it means that you are taking, um, you are taking the, the component of vector B and you are only using the perpendicular component uh, relative to A. Okay, so B here has two components. Okay, it has a component which is perpendicular to A and the component which is parallel to A. And when you are doing the cross product, so A cross B, the magnitude, it's like you take the magnitude of A, you multiply it, you multiply it by the perpendicular of the comp the, the, the perpendicular, perpendicular component of B relative to A. Or you can do, of course, the perpendicular component of A along B times B, okay? And if you do that, that's going to be the same thing as A times B times the sine. So you see, as theta goes down, so you're closing this gap here, 
the magnitude here is going to decrease, 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 get to zero. So when A is parallel to B, then the cross product equals zero. When the angle between A and B is 90 degree, then the cross product is going to be max. If they are anti-parallel, so the angle is 180 degrees, you get also zero. Okay, so that's how the cross product work. So we're going to find the so the the equation for the magnitude of the force will be the current times the length of the conductor inside the magnetic field times the magnetic field times the sine, so it's the angle, the angle between the magnetic field, the magnetic field and the current. The current and the magnetic field. And that's actually a cross product. So this is a very nice slide that I like uh, very much. You see that the current is going toward you. B is to the right. So the magnetic field is up. And you have to take in account the angle between I and B. So as the angle gets smaller, then the force decreases until it's going to be equal to zero. So if you don't like the three finger, that's a different way to do it, okay? That could be I, I, I toward you, B, B, that will be your hand, that will be B, so the force will come out of your pole. Okay, so that's a different way to do it, and that's that's what we call um, a, a cross product. Okay, so you're going to have a similar equation. I mean, you, you can derive the equation in the case when you have a moving charge, moving charge inside the magnetic field. So in that case, it's going to be QV, QV cross B. That will be the magnetic field force, right? You, you, you derive one from the other. Okay, so we're going to see that next, but if it's, uh, if you are talking about a wire, inside a magnetic field so you're going to say the magnetic force is i l and then cross b and that's going to be the angle uh, we are talking about the angle so here you have the equation there so it's the angle the angle between the l the length of the conductor, let's, let's say maybe that's going to be the, the conductor here. The length of the conductor, that's going to be B. Now, if you have a moving charge, so the magnetic force will be Q, V, cos, B. You, you can derive this one from that one. Because you remember, when you have a current flowing, this this is just positive charge moving. You can imagine that it's positive charge moving. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll see that in a moment. So again, here you have the conductor with a current flowing inside. That length of the conductor is inside the magnetic field, so it's going to be acted upon by a force. That's uh, so here you can again apply the right hand. So current is going up, the magnetic field. So when you see crosses, that means the magnetic field is going inside the screen. Somewhere you have north here, over there you have south. So the magnetic field is going into the screen. So the current is going up, magnetic field is going in the screen, so the force will be to the left, so it's going to be deflected to the left. Okay? So uh, here, what do you think of A? So the current here is going toward you, and the magnetic field is going 
um, away from you, so it's going into the screen. So the magnetic force here is zero because the the magnetic field is anti-parallel. So each time the current is parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field, the force is zero. Here the force is toward you. Uh, I mean the the current is toward you. The magnetic field is toward you. There is no force, right? The force equals zero because the current and the magnetic field are parallel. So in here, try to guess which direction is the force. So the current is, so you can pause the video. So the current is going toward you. Magnetic field is to the left. So the force will be down. And in that case, the current is going toward you, magnetic field is to the right, the force will be up. So that will be the answer because we want to balance out the weight. The weight is down, so the magnetic field will be up. So in that case, it can be balanced. Here it cannot be balanced because both forces are pointing down. Okay, so the unit for magnetic field is the Tesla. And the subunit is the Gauss, which is 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. So the, the magnetic field of the Earth, for example, is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 Gauss, which is 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so I think in class we did, um, we did this one. So you can, those, you, you can try those. Of course, you have to, um, practice with your textbook. And here you can pause the video and try to do that on your own. So here you have the length. Okay, so length. I'm gonna put length. Don't like that. Like to get a little bit thicker. So the length is zero point one. Oh wait, I know. One, two, so 0 0.4 meters. So you have the current here, I. I know because it's I equals six amp weight. So that's going to be the weight. Okay, so they want to find B. So it means obviously you're going to have a wire, like maybe going toward you, say, and then you have the weight down. So if it's balanced, it means the magnetic force is up, right? And then you can find, you know, where, where is the magnetic field? So, so the current is toward you toward you, so the current is going toward you. Um, so you can find where is the magnetic field. So if the magnetic field is to the right, for example, so let's say if the magnetic field is in this direction, so you, you see, it has to be like a, when we do not, even if we have angle, you, you want to have X, Y, Z, right? So the, the current is going toward you, X, B is along the Y, because they are perpendicular anyway. So the, the magnetic force is up. Okay. So it's like you make a X, Y, Z coordinate system. Okay, X, Y, Z. Of course, sometimes you have an angle here, but in that case, it's just 90 degrees. So anyway, they want to find out, so the, um, the magnetic field, right? So the, the, the magnetic force is the current, so it's proportional to the current, times the length, of the conductor inside the magnetic field times the magnetic field. And here 
the angle between the current and the magnetic field is 90. So that's going to be sine 90 equals the weight because it's balanced out. So we have 6 times 0 0.4 times B times 1 equals 0 0.35. Okay, so you can uh, isolate your unknown. Okay, uh, here it's, here you you are using the same equation, except that you are um, solving for the current. So you always use the equation I L B the sign, and that's going to be the angle between B and the current. We should put for L. Okay, if it's 90 degrees, then the magnetic force is uh, maximum. That will be in magnitude. Okay, and so we talked about this. Okay, we did that. We did this one. So you see you have a conductor, which is a wire, inside a permanent magnetic field, okay? You have the strength of the magnetic field. The magnetic field is uniform. So you have north to south. And um, so the so you have here, what you have here is an electromagnet, and it's going to be pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled by the permanent magnet, right? So you can apply the same equation. So try to do that. The only challenge here is that you want to find the length of the wire inside the magnetic field. And that length will be just how many times the, the it, it will be the distance around uh, times the, the number of turns, right? So you, you can pause the video and and try to do it. So think about that. So for, of course, the, the distance around, so that's the diameter. The distance around is the circumference. It's going to be 2 pi r. So the distance around is going to be uh, pi times the diameter. And here you have once and twice and three times and four times and fifth, five, uh, six times and so forth and so on, 50 times. So the length of the wire will be 50 times times pi times t. Once you understand that, you understand the how to solve the equation, right? So that means the the force will be um, the total length. So that's going to be 55 times pi times the diameter times the current times B. Okay. Diameter we have, that's going to be 0 0.0025. The current we have, and this we have two, which is... 0.1 tesla. And then they ask you to find the acceleration. So you just use F equals MA and you have the mass. And there is a typo here. So you, here you find uh, it's not 43, it's about 4.5 meter per second per second. So it's missing a dot here. Okay, so here I just tell you that the, the magnetic force here depends on, on the angle between, between L and B. If that angle here is zero, so if the current is parallel or anti-parallel to B, the force is going to be zero. If it's 90, it's going to be maximum. If it's in between zero and 90, it's going to be between, uh, you have to multiply by the sign which is between 0 and 1. Okay, so this you can figure out. 
um, you want the current to be deflected up, right? So you, you so you see if it's moving to the left, magnetic field is going toward you. The force is going to be up. So magnetic force always deflect but cannot cannot speed up. Okay, so here you have application. Um, you you can have like um, you apply a voltage here, so it's um, using electricity. So you apply your voltage plus and minus here, so you have an electric field. So the ions here in inside the sea water, I don't know chlorine, sodium, or things like that. Ions, they're gonna be um, moving here. They're gonna be. You're gonna have a current, okay, made of uh, those ions here moving in this direction, and then you apply a magnetic field. So maybe you have a, an electromagnet here underneath. So you have a magnetic field there. So you're gonna have a force here pushing water backward. So for every action you have a reaction, so the boat will be pushed forward. Okay, just a calculus part here. Each time you have like a surface, like let's say I have my hand, that's a surface, it's an area. Okay, I I I need to find a way how to Define the orientation of that area. So that's why I can have, like, we call the normal vector or uh, area vector that will be perpendicular to the surface. So that way I can define the orientation of that area. So when you do coding for um, uh, 3D games or, or 2D games or, or gaming, right? The, the computer. Computer coding, you, you need to understand how how that works, right? Because you want to make sure your character doesn't end up in uh, mid uh, mid space or mid air, right? So for any area, I can define a small vector that will give me the orientation, the orientation of the area relative to, for example, the ground, even if it's a uh, Close surface, I can define that little vector there. So likewise, if you have a small loop of current here, so you see it's going in this direction. So you take your right hand and the thumb, your thumb will give you the direction of that little normal vector. Okay. So that will be the orientation of that little loop here because you can define the area. So imagine you have an area here. It's like um, when when you are making soap bubble. Okay, so you have like an area there. That's going to be the normal normal vector perpendicular to this area. And that's going to be a loop of current. So if you have a loop of current, here, so it could be it could be a loop of current, but it could be also like a proton that is spinning that behave like a small magnet. Okay, so in that case, you see that little loop here. It's equivalent to a bar magnet, right? You see that the north, the north will be here. That's going to be the south, and I can define that vector here. Perpendicular, perpendicular to the plane here, right? That will give me the orientation of that uh, area here. So I can define the physical quantity that I'm going to call the magnetic dipole. Magnetic dipole, the magnitude is the current times the area and the direction. It's the same direction as that normal vector okay so if the loop is oriented this way you see that the normal vector is in this direction so the magnetic dipole it should remind you of the electric dipole so electric dipole it was the charge times the distance so it depends on the geometry electric dipole like you have in a water molecule here we have a magnetic dipole depends on the area and it depends on the the current here right so that's a magnetic dipole okay so again here you go around the loop 
the thumb will give you uh, the north, actually. That will be like a north, that will be the south, and it also, the thumb will give you the direction of the magnetic moment, which is like a vector. And that vector has the same direction as the normal vector, that uh, this normal vector here. Okay, so what's going to happen if you have a loop of current inside the magnetic field? Okay, so remember, that's going to behave like a small compass, like a small magnet. That's going to be the north, and that's going to be the south. So you see the north wants to face the south, and the south wants to face the north. So a small loop of current will always move oscillate will be acted upon by a torque in such a way that this vector will align itself with the magnetic field, okay? And it will show you which way the magnetic field is flowing, okay? It will have the same direction. So in that case, that's going to be a low state of energy. That's going to be a high state of energy. So that's how MRI works. So you have all those little protons spinning, okay? And it will align itself with the magnetic field. It will show you which way it's flowing. If you excite them, they're going to flip, but they will be applied by a torque to get back to a lower state of energy. So each time you have a loop of current, okay? So you see here you have current flowing in that loop. It's not happy because it's flowing this way. So the north is in, is in the screen. It will be acted upon by a torque and the torque will try to rotate the loop in such a way that the thumb will, will, um, show the south. Okay. To be it's in the lower state of energy because it's, it's behaving like a, uh, uh, a bar magnet, right? It's like a magnet. So it wants to rotate so the north face the south. So here is an application, a galvanometer used to measure the amount of current because here stronger is the current, stronger will be those forces, so the torque, and it will be proportional to the current here because you have a, sp a spring attached. That's how a motor works as well. And I, in class, I did a demo and I will make another video to show you the demo. But you see how it works. Very simple. The current is flowing here. You have a loop inside a loop carrying current inside the magnetic field here. So you're going to have forces acting on, on this side and on that side. Here there is no force because you see the lamp is parallel to the magnetic field. So you, you, the torque wants to rotate lo the loop in such a way, you see the loop is going um, this way, wants to rotate the, the loop such as the north side of the electromagnet will face the south here, and the south side of the electromagnet will say will face the north if you don't cut the contact okay so if electricity keep uh, spinning then it will stop here okay now it will be happy north will face south however the trick is that you're going to cut the contact so it's not a magnet anymore so it will keep uh, spinning because it has inertia and then it has contact anymore uh, again, so it will start over, okay? So that's how a motor works. And I have a short video. Is basically a current loop that's placed in a magnetic field, typically between the poles of a permanent magnet or maybe an electromagnet, so we can do it either way. And that loop rotates. It's on some kind of... Okay, we did a lot, actually. Okay, so that's the loop of current, okay, placed in the magnetic field. So it's going to be acted by a force, right? And you can go back to physics one and find the expression for the torque. And if you do that, you're going to get that expression here. That's going to be the number of loops. So you can have one loop, two loop, or you have a coil. That's how a motor works. And um, current flowing inside the coil times the magnetic field in which it's placed times the area, so the area of the loop, 
times the sine theta and the, 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 the sine here, that angle here, that's going to be the angle between that little normal vector and the magnetic field. So you see that when the angle is zero, so it means it will, the, the normal will align itself or, of the magnetic dipole vector will align itself to the magnetic field. So then there won't be any torque, right? Of course, the torque is maximum when this angle here is 90 degrees. So it doesn't have to be a rectangular loop. It could be like a circular loop, right? That equation will work. So I, I'm not going to show you uh, the math. You can, um, you can find the math in your textbook. It's, it's very easy to, uh, to derive this equation. The, the, it comes from the force, right? The magnetic force will be, um, of course, it depends of the number of loops. Okay. As you add more loops, you're going to have, you, you're going to, add the forces because these are vectors times the current flowing times the length of the conductor times p times the angle sine of the angle the force and uh, no, not the force the, the 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 l l and the magnetic field right and then you can from that you can find the torque also we'll do a example i i think I think we did that example here, but we did it last class. I'm not sure. So, okay, you can, can do it quickly. You can, you can see here again, you have a loop of currents. It's just one loop. So again, if you take your right hand here, you see that the, the normal vector or, or the magnetic dipole will be up. It's not happy here. So it wants to align itself with the magnetic field, right? So you need to have a torque that will align that vector with the magnetic field that will show which way the magnetic field is flowing. So you can have a torque here that will rotate that loop. And you see here the torque is maximum because the angle between the current and B is 90 degrees. So the, the equation is uh, very simple. So you can have the torque will be the number of loop is one times the current. The current is 0 0.5 times the magnetic field, which is 120 times 10 to the 6 times the area, which is the width, times the length. So it's going to be 0 0.06 times 0 0.08. And the unit will be Newton meters, right? So if you have a torque, you can find the inertia, moment of inertia. That's not the current, okay? That's inertia times the acceleration. Okay, so you can uh, you can do that problem here. So if the angle is uh, 30 degrees, you're going to apply the same equation, but now you're going to say sine, uh, sine 30. Okay, so the area is again 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 times the magnetic field, so 30 times 10 to the negative 3 times 5 times sine 30. That's going to be the torque. We did that in class. So you can do that, it's except that now you can find um, the magnetic moment, which has a magnitude by definition of the number of loops in the coil times the current go going through the coil, so flowing inside the coil, times the area of the coil. So let's see here. I have the equation here. Okay, so it has a direction. So if you have a loop here of current, the direction will be given by your right hand. Okay, 
So that vector here, the magnetic dipole vector, will have the same direction as the normal force, the thumb. Not the normal force, the normal vector. I'm getting tired. Um, let's see, let's go back. What did we do again? I think we stopped here. Did we talk about... The only thing I talked is that if you, so you have two equations here for the magnetic force. If you are talking about the, um, the magnetic force on a conductor of length L, so you're going to use that equation here. So that will be the current, the, the amount of current flowing. L is the length of the conductor placed in your magnetic field. And B is the magnetic field. So here we suppose that the magnetic field is uniform. Otherwise, you have to do uh, integration. And that will be the angle between the current and B. So again, if the current and B uh, are parallel or anti-parallel, the force equals to zero. We're going to see next that if you have a moving charge here, it's also going to be acted upon by a force. But that force here will be a centripetal force. It's going to deflect the, the particle. So in that case here, you have an, an electron. So electron, you have to take your height, uh, your left hand. Electron coming inside the magnetic field. Magnetic field goes into your screen in this direction. So the force will be there. So that force here is going to deflect the electron, but it cannot speed it up, right? It cannot make it go faster or slower. It can only change its direction. So it's going to describe a circle. So you see how um, here, if you have an electron going inside the magnetic field, it wants to circle the magnetic field lines.